Hello everyone and welcome back to another album review. And in this video I'm going to review Picasso 808 by Black Ceiling. Brand new album from Witch House producer Black Ceiling called Picasso 808 which, like the title suggests, it entirely consists of 808 beats which is something that is quite common in witch house music. I mean, the most popular channel on YouTube dedicated to witch house music is called Nightmares and 808s. Black Ceiling is definitely one of the most important names regarding this genre. His discography though is quite large and he has released a plethora of different albums so his discography gets harder and harder each year to just process through and listen through everything he has released up until this point and the issue with that is that most of the time you get more quantity rather than quality. In my opinion, Black Ceiling has some really solid works, but most of them feel a bit lackluster and some of his direction into more simplistic and straightforward witch house sounds do not always end up feeling that fulfilling. Now, the case with Picasso 808 is that it consists of some really great ideas. He also released a great EP on this year called Carry Me Home. Definitely some of my favorite works from Black Ceiling are into this EP. And Picasso 808 definitely portrays a nice aesthetic with the whole direction it goes into. In my opinion though, there could have been even more to this album. I think some of the better ideas from any Black Ceiling project are actually here. Definitely one of the best things about this project are the beats. Even though they become quite repetitive, I think that the use of the 808s that he has done in this album is really good. I really like the beats to this thing and I think that there are some quite nice and interesting sounds. But the thing is that the rest of the mix feels a bit lackluster. In my opinion, some of the tracks feel a bit empty. There could have been more to them. It feels like there could have been more emphasis, a bit more emotion to these tracks. Something that would sound heavier, more passionate. As there are so many moments in this album where it feels like it has a low bass response. Some of the melodies don't feel as alive. Some of the bass scenes feel really washed up in the background. And this is where the album loses its its whole potential into being something more satisfying, more fulfilling and more gratifying. There are moments over here that sound a bit bland. Tracks like Crystal Stars, Johnny Belinda, Dreamcatcher, Gloria, Waiting For More. All of them have some quite nice and interesting ideas but as a whole thing, they feel kind of empty. There could have been more emphasis to them, something that would feel more passionate, something that would give me more reason to come back into them. But like I said, I think that this album also consists some amazing works from Black Ceiling, especially on the beginning of this thing. The album, in my opinion, makes a great introduction with the track Patek Shadows. I like that it starts with a sample from one of my favorite movies of all time, Gangs of New York. And the whole melody and the beat to it, it builds up to something really nice and heavily emotional. I really love the dark melodies of this thing. Then there's also the track Dunes, which is definitely one of the tracks that does something a bit different with the beat to this thing, as it has those parts that sound a bit more aggressive. It has those heavily distorted trap bass segments, and I love the sample to this thing, and I love this sort of dark and horrifying atmosphere to it. But by far what has to be my favorite moment out of this album is the track The Life of the Wolf. This is not only by far the best moment out of this album, but it's easily one of the best tracks Black Ceiling has ever done. And that's because it feels like it's an alternate version of the most popular track and definitely one of the best tracks from the entire Black Ceiling catalog, if not the best, Wave Life. Getting into Witch House, Wave Life is definitely 
one of the most important and one of the most essential tracks in the genre when it comes to Witch House, this is definitely the track that made Black Ceiling blow up and making him one of the most important names in the genre. And one of the best things about this track is its sample which is used in an astonishing fashion. The track The Life of a Wolf actually uses the same sample but in a different way. The track is slower, is more moody and the sample plays in a different structure and a lower pitch and it's still used in such an amazing way. This is a fantastic track, the sample is still used in a really great way and it definitely makes it one of my favorite tracks from Black Ceiling. Amazing atmosphere, definitely a really great track for Witch House standards. The whole melody to this thing, the way it's spaced, its whole structure, the sample, it works amazingly. And so it's a bit of a shame that no other moment comes close to the amazingness of this track. The Life of a Wolf is definitely miles ahead from anything else that is on this album. If each track was like this, we would be talking about an absolutely amazing album. But even though this track does an amazing work with its sample, actually some of my issues with this album come with the sampling choices and how he just uses them into the album. I don't think that the samples in this thing work all that well in each of the occasions and my main examples of that are at first the track Cause which is a really short track that has some samples that feels like a rapping from Travis Scott or from someone that uses the exact same ad-libs with Travis Scott and in general there is a trap instrumental behind them which is a bit blood, a bit generic and in general it doesn't feel like that much of a great idea. Then the other track that I didn't enjoy was the track Moonlighter. It uses a sample from the track Moonlight by XXXTentacion and it throws me off a little bit and I don't think that there is a great beat or melody attached to it. So those were definitely two songs I didn't enjoy. The rest of the album it's okay but some of the moments there could have been better, there could have been more to it. The album definitely had some nice moments. It was one of the more promising and one of the albums with the highest potential. And it stands for some of the better works from Black Ceiling. For a full album it doesn't really stand out but definitely some of the best moments from Black Ceiling land on Picasso 808. Really dig the direction it took with the beats. If it wasn't as bland we would be talking about an amazing album. I'm going to give Picasso 808 a 6 plus out of 10. What's your opinion on this album? Like it? Dislike it? Why? And what do you want me to review next time? Let me know down in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.